Well, welcome back. Now let's see what is this respiration. How does it takes place in the cells? Okay. So there's a lot of difference between breathing and respiration. So the normal thing. This is breathing where you inhale the air and then you exhale the air. That's breathing. That's a normal process. But when you say respiration, what happens is you take this. It's a process by which food is burned down in cells. How? It's taken inside. When the oxygen is taken inside, okay, that help, that's release energy, okay. It happens in the mitochondria of the cells. All this respiration process happens in the mitochondria of the cells. How does it happen? When you take this oxygen, it goes to food, it breaks it down into simpler, simpler particles and the energy is given out where the energy is utilized by the particles. Now, let's see how does it actually takes place. Now, I'm, I'm, I'll put a question apart for you. What is this ATP? Well, ATP means adenosine triphosphate. And what is this ADP? Yes, ADP means adenosine diphosphate. So, let's see this. So, when you take this ADP and phosphate, when this ADP combines with the a, uh, phosphate, in case when the respiration is taken place, and when the energy is given out, and when the energy is given out, the ATP molecules are given out. So this is how this is how the process takes place. Okay. So the energy is released during this respiration. They make this ATP molecules. All right. From the ADP molecules, so break down, and this ADP molecules is made. And then what happens? That energy is stored in the cells in the form of ATP molecules. And whenever the cells need the energy, ATP is broken down in the presence of water to form ADP, and energy is released. Now, ATP, it is stored into a body and the presence of water, you know, this it is it gets converted into ADP plus energy. That happens. The best example for this is you have this eating, you have stored nice energy stored into your body. And suddenly what happens? You do rigorous exercise, everything. Then you start feeling like bit, bit energylessness and all. And then you suddenly take water and from nowhere the energy is released. And how does that happen? Because same thing the ADP plus phosphate the ATP so the ATP when it's completely utilized so whatever is there here okay whatever is there it is it is rested or it is put into the body which is there into the body and when you drink this water that breaks down into ADP plus energy now we have this types of respiration okay so there are two types of respiration one is the aerobic and the anaerobic what does this aerobic mean Air, aerobic, air, air means in the presence of oxygen. All right. So in the presence of oxygen, what all takes place? Let's see what this happens. So aerobic generally means that in the presence of oxygen, the respiration takes place, and this is take this takes place in majority of the organisms, major majority of the uh, majority of the animals, majority of the human beings. Now what happens here? In aerobic respiration, the glucose here is converted into pyruvate okay this takes place in the cytoplasm and how it is done in the presence of oxygen this happens in the presence of oxygen and then what happens when the pyruvate is there again in the presence of oxygen that is converted back into carbon dioxide plus water and that that happens in the mitochondria this happens in the cytoplasm and this happens in the mitochondria so in the presence of oxygen when you take this glucose energy when you intake this so the oxygen when you intake this oxygen when you breathe so that that's a form of respiration there it, it takes place in cytoplasm where it gets converted to pyruvate and then in the presence of oxygen again when you breathe in the in the mitochondria what happens it is given back as carbon dioxide and then you have this water so that's what happens and then coming into the next type that is the anaerobic respiration where well this anaerobic respiration, it means that absence of oxygen. So this absence of oxygen takes place. So what happens here, the anaerobic respiration in muscle cells, glucose is converted into pyruvate. Okay. And that pyruvate in the absence of oxygen is converted into lactic acid plus energy. All right. So here, generally glucose energy is there. In the presence of oxygen and cytoplasm, it happens. And then it's converted into pyruvate. So pyruvate is the same common thing now going little bit more further in the absence of oxygen when oxygen is absent in the muscle cells 
lactic acid plus this energy is given out. So what happens is here, anaerobic respiration is also taking place in the yeast. So that glucose is converted into pyruvate and then in the presence of oxygen and that is in the absence of oxygen, ethanol plus carbon dioxide. In yeast it takes place. Okay, coming to this concept. So sometimes it happens that, you know, you're running a running race and you sprint. So all the energy which is there, you know, all the glucose that is utilized, okay, and it gets converted into pyruvate. Now, when it is a rigorous one, there, there's the absence of oxygen. So when there's the absence of oxygen, what happens? There's lactic acid in the muscle cells, there's lactic acid plus energy is given. And sometimes you get this cramps and all that happens because of that. So immediately after that, you relax for some time, you take deep breaths, take some, uh, take some glucose and take some water. And again, it is restored back. So that is how what happens. And now this is, you know, this is a process which takes place in the formation or in the preparation of this ethanol. Ethanol, you know, is this, you have this alcohol, it's a type of alcohol that, that's, you know, in the preparation of alcohol, this takes place. So you have this, the glucose energy that is supplied, you go in the absence of oxygen, that pyruvate takes place in the absence of oxygen again in the yeast. You have this ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus energy. So this is how you have this called as fermentation where it gets fermented. And once it gets fermented, you have this another type of energy. All these wines, all these alcohols are prepared by this fermentation process where it is allowed to ferment, where its microorganisms and everything are allowed to act, allowed for some time and then it gets fermented and then it goes on to the next one. Now, respiration in human beings, how it happens? Let's see how it happens in human beings. So here, the main organs of the respiratory system, as you see here, this is the nasal cavity, this is the oral cavity, okay? Epiglottis, if you see here, deep inside, there's something which is, you know, thing here, that's called as epiglottis, okay? This entire thing is called as a nasal cavity, and then you have this oral cavity, which is inside here, and then you have this phanx, then the larynx, then the trachea, which is here, you have this bronchial, terminal bronchioles, which are here, this is the cartilage and you have this left lung and right lung and there's a bronchus, okay? And you have this alluvili which does the needful of exchange of the gases. Here is the esophagus which goes down further. This, you know, this is a foot pipe and you have this air pipe, wind pipe which you call in the normal things. So, these are the main organs which are present here which help in the respiration process. Now, if you go to the next one, how is the process of respiration? So it happens, so you it air goes through the nose here and your mouth, it goes through here and then the hairs and the mucus traps in the dust. You have, if you see the, if you observe your nose, there are hairs, okay? The mucus and the hairs, they trap the dust particles. So that's the first level of filtration of the dust and water which is. So it doesn't go inside. Once that in it blocks here, it goes inside, it further gets filtered. If that is stopped, it goes here. If that is stopped, it goes down to your lungs and that's how the infection of occurs. Now, it then passes on through the phanix, larynx, trachea, bronchi and enters the lungs over here. It enters the lungs. And then, it has the rings of cartilage which prevents the food from, you know, collapsing when there's no air into the trachea. Alright? Then you have this bronchia which divides into smaller tube called bronchioles. So, here are the bronchioles. So, it, it is, you know, smaller tubes which ends in the air sacs called alveoli. If you see, this is the alveoli. So you have this the air sacs, which ends up here. We have this capillary bed and the squamous epithelium tissue, which does the process of absorbing it. All right. So the alveoli is supplied with blood vessels through which the exchange of gases takes place. So what happens? Generally, it comes, you take this oxygen inside here and then, you know, your ex oxygen is exchanged in the bloodstream. Then the carbon dioxide which processes here, that goes here, that carbon dioxide again, it takes back here and you breathe out. It happens within a few seconds. So that is a process which is keeping on happening here. And when we breathe in, the air of the muscles diaphragm contracts and moves downwards. So if you see here, when you breathe in, the chest expands. The chest expands and the ribs come forward and the diaphragm here, the diaphragm contracts, it contracts on. And then afterwards, you breathe out. When you're breathing out, the chest contracts, it goes inside and then you come here, you see here, the diaphragm also relaxes. So here when you breathe out, the muscles of the diaphragm relaxes and upwards. You can compare this here. So this is how, you know, you take this, it's a simple experiment 
to show that how is the breathing process, respiration process which is taking place. Here what happens here, you know, you have this, okay, you have this breathing process here, you have the expiration where, you know, it goes inside and then you have this here where it is taken inside, inspiration, when you pull this up, it goes inside, it enlarges and when you pull this outside, it just expands, okay, it contracts. So that is how the mechanism of breathing takes place. And then now we have this transportation which is taking place. So how does this transportation takes place in human beings? So we'll have this transportation over here, okay? And then the main transport system in human beings is a circulatory system. So this consists of this bloods, arteries, veins, capillaries, all these things takes place in the transportation process. So here, now mainly if you take this blood, blood transports all these things through the veins, you know, all these capillaries and all, and it transports the food, oxygen, waste products. It consists of this plasma, red blood cells and white blood cells and the platelets. So what happens here? All these things come under the blood. And then you have this arteries. So this arteries, the carriage is pure blood from heart to all parts of the body. And they're thick walled and they do not have any walls. And then now from this, you know, thus if you if, if you focus on this, they carry the pure blood from the heart to all parts of the body. They are called as arteries. And then we must be having something which carries back from there to the blood. Yes, that's called as a veins. They carry this impure blood from all parts of the body to the heart. They are thin walled and have this half walls. So they carry this impure blood from all parts of the body to the heart. And you have this, if you see your hand or legs, you have this, you know, the greenish color which runs. They are called as veins. Alright. They carry this impure blood from here, from all parts of the body to the, to the heart. Also, you know, whenever some tests have to be done or blood has to be done, that is carried on through these veins. And then you have this capillaries which are very narrow blood vessels which connects the arteries and veins together. Well, the capillaries are present here in the ear and nose everywhere. So there, you know, the veins, they exchange this food, water, oxygen, carbon dioxide between the blood cells and take to this and you have this uh, uh, cells which takes place within the capillaries. So these processes are very important how the transportation takes place. Mm -hmm.